Section 1. Listening Comprehension In this section of the text, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in this test. When you take the actual TOEFL test, you will not be allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Try to work on practice test E in the same way. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, Read the four possible answers in your book and choose the best answer. Then on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording you hear, I don't like this painting very much. Neither do I. What does the man mean? In your book you read, A. He doesn't like the painting either. B. He doesn't know how to paint. C. He doesn't have any paintings. D. He doesn't know what to do. You learn from the conversation that neither the man nor the woman likes the painting. The best answer to the question, what does the man mean, is A. He doesn't like the painting either. Therefore, the correct choice is A. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. Have you saved enough to buy that new printer for your computer yet? You know, money seems to be burning a hole in my pocket lately. Maybe next month. What does the man mean? Number two. We need a fourth player for tennis this morning. Do you want to join us? I've got a class at nine, but Carol's free and she's really good. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number three. I don't understand how this budget was calculated. Let me have a look, okay? What does the woman mean? Number four. I'm going to the snack bar for a cup of coffee. Would you like me to bring you back something? Not from the snack bar. But could you pick up a paper for me? What does the man mean? Number five. I'll be coming straight from work, so I'll have to pack a change of clothes. It's only a barbecue. Jeans and a t-shirt will be fine. What does the woman imply? Number six. Man, I'm exhausted. I stayed up the whole night studying for my history midterm exam. Why do you always wait till the last minute? What can be inferred about the man? Number seven. Let's go watch the fireworks tonight. I have tickets to the theater. What does the woman mean?
Number eight. Do you think you could give me a ride to the library tonight? I'd like to, but I'm heading in the other direction. I'm meeting Jean tonight. What does the man mean? Number nine. I want to pay you for that long-distance call I made, but I suppose you haven't gotten your phone bill yet. Oh, but I have. What does the man mean? Number 10. I've had my new stereo for a whole week, but I haven't yet figured out how to record a cassette. Didn't an instruction manual come with it? What does the woman imply? Number 11. Is there a candy machine in this building? Uh-huh. It's down the hall on your left, but it has an out-of-order sign on it. What does the woman mean? Number 12. I've had it with being sick in bed. I've read most of these magazines twice. Well, if it'll help, I'll run to the store and get you some new ones. What will the man probably do? Number 13. You know, I've been watering my plants regularly, but they're still not doing well in my new dorm room. Maybe instead of keeping them in the corner, you should put them directly in front of the window. What does the woman imply? Number 14. I think I'll take my mother to that French restaurant on Main Street for her birthday. I hope it's not any time soon. They're usually booked up weeks in advance. What does the man mean? Number 15. That famous violinist our professor was talking about is going to be the soloist in next week's concert. Great. I don't want to miss it. Where can we get tickets? What will the speakers probably do next week? Number 16. So, are you going over to Cindy's after class? I'd like to, but she has a pet cat and I'm very allergic. What does the man mean? Number 17. One of the members of the dormitory council is quitting. Do you know of anyone who'd be interested in taking her place? I'm not sure, but I'll certainly keep an eye out for you. What will the man probably do? Number 18. Have you heard about the new fitness center they're building downtown? Yeah, I can hardly wait for it to open. What does the man mean? Number 19. Hi, I'd like to sign up for the film selection committee. Is this the right place? Yes, it is. There are a lot of fun people on that committee, but you'll have to put in a lot of hours. I hope your schedule isn't too tight. 
What does the woman imply? Number 20. You don't seem to be able to sit still today. What's going on? Today they announce who gets the big scholarship for next year. How does the man probably feel? Go on to the next page. Number 21. I'm really looking forward to the picnic tomorrow. If we're lucky, we'll have some sun this year for a change. What does the man imply? Number 22. What a mess for the custodian to clean up. You can say that again. What does the man mean? Number 23. I wish we had more time for lunch. Me too. I get indigestion. What does the man mean? Number 24. You haven't seen a blue notebook, have you? I hope I didn't leave it at school. Did you check that pile of books and papers you left on the desk last night? What does the man imply? Number 25. The berries on this bush look kind of tasty. Do you think I should try one? I wouldn't. Even the birds stay away from that bush. What does the woman imply? Number 26. What did you do to your hair? I just had to have it cut. It was always getting in my eyes. What does the woman imply? Number 27. You're on the right track. I just think you need to narrow the topic down. Yeah, you're right. I always choose these broad areas when I'm doing a research paper. What will the man probably do? Number 28. When are you going to have your eyes checked? I had to cancel my appointment. I couldn't fit it in. What does the woman mean? Number 29. Did you notice that Mark shaved off his beard over the summer? Notice. I didn't even recognize him. What does the man imply? Number 30. I probably should have found out if you like spicy food. Oh, but I appreciate all the trouble you went to. I guess I'm just not a very adventurous eater. What can be inferred about the woman? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page.
Now read along as the directions for Part B are being read. Part B, Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your book and choose the best answer. Then on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you should not take notes or write on your test pages. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation at a bicycle shop. Hi, John. Oh, hi, Laura. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm usually here on weekends. It's my dad's shop. So, you're looking for a bike? Yeah, now that the weather's warming up, I thought I'd get some exercise instead of taking the bus all the time. Well, you came to the right place. Do you know what you'd like? Well, I don't want a racer or a touring bike or anything. Mostly, I'll just be using it to get me back and forth from work. How far is that? About four miles. Are there a lot of hills on the way? Some, I guess, but uh, maybe I should just tell you up front that I've only got $150. Can I get anything decent for that? Well, you're not going to get anything top of the line, but we do have a few trade-ins in the back that are in good condition. That sounds good. And you're right. For the kind of riding you're going to be doing, the most important thing is comfort. You want to make sure it's the right height for you. Follow me and I'll show you what we've got. Number 31. Why is Laura at the bicycle shop? Number 32. Why does John want to buy a bicycle? Number 33. What does Laura suggest that John do? Number 34. What does Laura say is most important about a bike? Questions 35 through 39. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hi, Lynn. I saw you at registration yesterday. I sailed right through, but you were standing in a long line. Yeah, I waited an hour to sign up for a distance learning course. Distance learning? Never heard of it. Well, it's new this semester. It's only open to psychology majors. But I bet it'll catch on elsewhere. Yesterday, over a hundred students signed up. Well, what is it? It's an experimental course. I registered for child psychology. All I've got to do is watch a 12-week series of televised lessons. The department shows them several different times a day and in several different locations. Don't you ever have to meet with your professor? Yeah. After each part of the series, I have to talk to her and the other students on the phone, you know, about our ideas. Then we'll meet on campus three times for reviews and exams. It sounds pretty non-traditional to me, but I guess it makes sense, considering how many students have jobs. It must really help with their schedules, not to mention how it'll cut down on traffic. You know, last year my department did a survey, and they found out that 80% of all psychology majors were employed. That's why they came up with the program. Look, I'll be working three days a week next semester, and it was either cut back on my classes or try this out. The only thing is... Doesn't it seem impersonal, though? I mean, I'd miss having class discussions and hearing what other people think. Well, I guess that's why phone contact's important. Anyway, it's an experiment. Maybe I'll end up hating it. Maybe, but I'll be curious to see how it works out. Number 35. 
Where did the man see the woman yesterday? Number 36. How is the distance learning course different from traditional courses? Number 37. What do the speakers agree is the major advantage of the distance learning course? Number 38. Why did the woman decide to enroll in the distance learning course? Number 39. What does the man think is a disadvantage of distance learning? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read along as the directions for Part C are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several short talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and the questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your book and choose the best answer. Then on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear, listen to an instructor talk to his class about a television program. I'd like to tell you about an interesting TV program that'll be shown this coming Thursday. It'll be on from 9 to 10 p.m. on Channel 4. It's part of a series called Mysteries of Human Biology. The subject of the program is the human brain, how it functions, and how it can malfunction. Topics that will be covered are dreams, memory, and depression. These topics are illustrated with outstanding computer animation that makes the explanations easy to follow. Make an effort to see this show. Since we've been studying the nervous system in class, I know you'll find it very helpful. Now listen to a sample question. What is the main purpose of the program? In your book, you read, A. To demonstrate the latest use of computer graphics. B. To discuss the possibility of an economic depression. C. To explain the workings of the brain. D. To dramatize a famous mystery story. The best answer to the question, what is the main purpose of the program, is C. To explain the workings of the brain. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Now listen to another sample question. Why does the speaker recommend watching the program? In your book you read, A. It is required of all science majors. B. It will never be shown again. C. It can help viewers improve their memory skills. D. It will help with coursework. The best answer to the question, why does the speaker recommend watching the program, is D. It will help with coursework. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Remember, you should not take notes or write on your test pages. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 40 through 43. Listen to a student report in the United States history class. So, uh, as Jim said, James Polk was the 11th president, and uh, 
Well, my report's about the next president, Zachary Taylor. Taylor was elected in 1849. It's surprising because, well, he was the first president that didn't have any previous political experience. The main reason he was chosen as a candidate was because he was a war hero. In the army, his men called him old, rough, and ready. I guess because of his rough edges. He was kind of blunt, and he didn't really look like a military hero. He liked to do things like wear civilian clothes instead of a uniform, even in battle. And he was so short and plump, he had to be lifted up onto his horse. But he did win a lot of battles, and he became more and more popular. So the Whig Party decided to nominate him for the presidency, even though no one knew anything about where he stood on the issues. I couldn't find much about his accomplishments, probably because he was only in office about a year and a half before he died. But one thing, he pushed for the development of the Transcontinental Railroad because he thought it was important to form a link with the West Coast. There was a lot of wealth in California and Oregon from commerce and minerals and stuff. Also, he established an agricultural bureau in the Department of the Interior and promoted more government aid to agriculture. Well, that's about all I found. Like I said, he died in office in 1850, so his vice president took over. And that's the next report. So, thank you. Number 40. Why was Zachary Taylor chosen by his party as a candidate for president? Number 41. According to the speaker, why is it surprising that Taylor was elected president? Number 42. Why did Taylor accomplish relatively little as president? Number 43. What will the class probably do next? Questions 44 through 46. Listen to a talk at a special event. I want to welcome each and every balloon enthusiast to Philadelphia. Thank you for coming here this morning to commemorate the first balloon voyage in the United States. On January 9, 1793, at 10 o'clock in the morning, a silk balloon lifted into the skies above this city, which was, at the time, the capital of the country. According to the original records of the flight, the voyage lasted 46 minutes, from its departure in Philadelphia to its landing across the Delaware River in New Jersey. Though our pilots today will try to approximate the original landing site, they're at the mercy of the winds, so who knows where they'll drift off to. Even the balloonist in 1793 experienced some uncertain weather that day. There were clouds, fog, and mist in various directions. Our reenactment promises to be nothing less than spectacular. The yellow balloon directly behind me is five stories high. It's inflated with helium, unlike the original, which was filled with hydrogen and, unbeknownst to the pilot, potentially explosive. Gas-filled models are pretty uncommon now because of the extremely high cost. So the 80 other balloons in today's launch are hot air, heated by propane burners. These balloons are from all over the country. Number 44. What is the purpose of the balloon launch? Number 45. What problem might today's pilots encounter? Number 46. What does the speaker imply about helium balloons? Question.
questions 47 through 50. Listen to part of a lecture in a geology class. I'm glad you brought up the question of our investigations into the makeup of the Earth's interior. In fact, since this is the topic of your reading assignment for next time, let me spend these last few minutes of class talking about it. There were several important discoveries in the early part of this century that helped geologists develop a more accurate picture of the Earth's interior. The first key discovery had to do with seismic waves. Remember, they are the vibrations caused by earthquakes. Well, scientists found that they traveled thousands of miles through the Earth's interior. This finding enabled geologists to study the inner parts of the Earth. You see, these studies revealed that these vibrations were of two types, compression, or P waves, and shear, or S waves. And researchers found that P waves travel through both liquids and solids, while S waves travel only through solid matter. In 1906, a British geologist discovered that P waves slowed down at a certain depth, but kept traveling deeper. On the other hand, S waves either disappeared or were reflected back. So he concluded that the depth marked the boundary between a solid mantle and a liquid core. Three years later, another boundary was discovered, that between the mantle and the Earth's crust. There's still a lot to be learned about the Earth. For instance, geologists know that the core is hot, Evidence of this is the molten lava that flows out of volcanoes, but we're still not sure what the source of the heat is. Number 47. What is the purpose of the talk? Number 48. What important discovery about seismic waves does the instructor mention? Number 49. What did the study of seismic vibrations help geologists learn more about? Number 50. What did P and S waves help scientists discover about the layers of the Earth? This is the end of Section 1 of Practice Test E. Turn off your cassette player. Set your clock for 25 minutes and begin work on Section 2. Completing the sample answer sheet.